Okay guys, today is the day. I am finally taking out the SSL Alpha Link converters. Uh, these have been really great, extremely solid. I have quite literally never had an issue with these. So probably the most solid piece of gear, but they're old and it's preventing me from from changing over to other things. So SSLs are coming out. The RME M32 is going in replace of these. Now I'm gonna leave the Apogee Big Ben in here as well. I don't know if I'm actually gonna keep that as a master clock till I know that, you know, I'm just gonna le at least leave this in here for right now. Okay, here we go. Okay guys, so these two are, these are the SSL converters. Uh, this is the Apogee Big Ben. And then this is the Ferrofish. The, uh, the metal cover isn't on right now. <laughs> we'll talk about that another time. But anyways, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, first get all of these DB25s off. Also wanna mention that I ordered some much, much better quality DB25 cables for all this stuff. These were a little temporary setup for the meantime while I was switching converters. These are all of the, the word clock cables, the coax cables. So I'm gonna pull all these out, even though I'm gonna have to pretty much put them right back. The last is the actual Maddie cable. Now these are very, you know, this is essentially a, a very fine piece of plastic. <laughs> you know, it's an optical cable. I have the caps for these. So I'm gonna cap every single one of them um, just to make sure nothing, no dirt or they don't get scratched or anything like that while I'm switching things up. So now I'm taking out both of the SSL Alpha Link converters. It's a little sad to take these out of here. These things have been so good for so long. And just a last little quick look at both of these converters. One is a 416, the other is a 16.4. It's just one has 16 inputs and four outputs and the other has the opposite. But now these are out of here. Now we can put in the RME M32. So the first thing I went and did is attach these ADAT cables from the Ferrofish outputs to the RME inputs. So these are analog inputs, and I'm just using the inputs on this card. This way I can plug in my analog um, signals into here. It'll digitally convert it and then spit it out through these two ADAT outputs. So ADAT out one goes into the ADAT input, and then ADAT two output goes to the ADAT input. So now I have all 16 channels through ADAT connected to the RME card. But now I need to get this a digital clock signal from the Big Ben. This time around, I am going to, I'm not gonna use the, the standard coax cable, these ones, the BNC connections. I'm actually gonna be using the optical connection so I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna be using the ADAT input. Well, I guess it's the SPDIF maybe input. So essentially, oops, we wanna do output. So we're doing the Big Ben digital clock output through the optical into the optical input on the Ferrofish. So now, minus power, this whole thing is connected. So we got some more stuff to do on the RME, but one of the first things we can do is the word clock input we can connect this here and then these are all the big ben the bnc the word clock output so i'm just going to go to output number one and there we go that is the word clock okay guys so now i'm going to go ahead and fill up all 32 analog outputs now i am not going to use the d sub connections just because of how I'm connecting everything, it's just not gonna work out, not at least in eight channel sections, and I don't have enough cables to make it all work. So I'm gonna use all the TRS. And fortunately, where the first 18 outputs are gonna go is right to the patch bay up top. I know it might be difficult to see, but there's 16 points open at the very top up there. Okay, so there you go. Every single output has been filled up. Just really quickly, I'll just go through this. So, so you can see channels one through 16, these are just straight analog outputs are gonna go right to the SSL X desk inputs. And this is really the core channels that I'm gonna be mixing from. And then if we look at 17 and 18, 
This is actually the effects return. So I'm using the effects return as an additional input. And then 19 and 20, that's actually the external input. So that's just like a two channel input. If I'm not gonna be doing any analog summing, I just wanna monitor you know, a video editing program, listen to music. So then we got 21 and 22. That's the analog outputs that's gonna run to the lexicon inputs. 23 and 24, that's the inputs for the MIDI verb. Same thing with the quadra verb and the third dimension. Then 29 and 30 are the mixer out. Now it's actually the side mixer that I have next to me. That's what I use when I'm doing the screen capture for these YouTube videos or any of the social media posts. And then 31 and 32 is used for the, the hardware external inserts. So that's in the DAW if I need to essentially do like a send and return using a set of inputs and outputs that will be the outputs for that okay guys so i just wanted to show you that i got all the signal in and out of the rme card you can see all the lights lighting up there which is always exciting i am using eight channels here then i'm using the eight alternative channels so now we're up to 16. this is that effects return that i'm using as just a stereo input an additional input and then all of the outboard effects will come to here which means I'm using my four external effects processors so so all four of these units all their outputs get dumped into this Yamaha mixer so how this works is it takes you know this is the the lexicon and then this is the MIDI verb 2 then these two channels are the quadra verb and then the last two are the third dimension. So essentially I'm taking all four of these effects, having individual inputs, summing them together to a single stereo output. And you can see this is actually VCA controlled. That stereo output comes to this stereo input right here. And then I'm able to blend it into the rest of the track. And you can just quickly see how I have this set up. Uh, the output level is plus 19, have it in 32 channel mode. Um, using the optical input, uh, 48K, uh, it's being clocked by the, the word clock. Uh, the meters, you can have them just like on, they'll stay always lit at, the, the, at their peak value. Remote is really pointless, I'm not using that right now. But And then you can, uh, you can actually hold this button in, and then it'll lock all those parameters so you can't accidentally change them. And then of course, I do have my meters working. Let's see, let's get to a better part of the song where some more stuff is happening, there we go. So I got all my meters running now. The meters are connected to the patch bay. So the RME card spits out the, the first 20 channels that actually go to the X desk, go to the patch bay. They are split into two signals. One goes to the SL X desk, the other goes to the meters. So this is pre-fader meters. It's really more to make sure that I am feeding enough signal into the X desk. So in the time that I've had the X desk, I do notice that when I drive the signal a little harder, I do get a little bit more saturation, especially on the first eight channels with the, uh, with the actual gain drive. But the important thing to know, and I forgot to mention this, is after it comes out of the card, it goes to the patch bay. Um, when I hit the signal harder, all of my transformers that I have connected to the input stage, I'm also hitting those transformers harder. So I'm also creating even more saturation. So between the, the eight gain knobs on here for the fader channels, um, I'm hitting those harder, and then I'm also hitting the eight channels, the alternate inputs that have the eight transformers on them, I'm also hitting that harder which is the, probably the reason why I like it. I like that little bit more saturation, a little more driven sound, and I love what a push transformer sounds like. Pretty much all the cables that I'm using right now are just like some really cheap Hosa cables. Not saying that they're like bad cables. They're just very inexpensive compared to, you know, some of the gear I have. Now, knowing that I was gonna go ahead and do this, I'm just, I'm just using what I have right now just to get things connected so I can make sure it all works. And then after, I'm either going to build all my own cables, like I've built all the patch bay ones. I built probably, I don't know, 60, 70 of these. I used Canary Wire and a couple of different manufacturers of um, the actual TRS ends. But I just wanna make sure, um, because I do have a habit of changing things, that 
you know, everything works the way I want with my setup. And then I'm going to go ahead and either make or buy all the cables. Um, you know, some good high quality stuff to, to match everything else. But if you guys are interested in seeing how I make my cables and some of the little fun things that I have came, <laughs> came up with to make cables, uh, I can definitely, I can definitely make a video out of that. If you guys want to see it, please drop a comment below. All right, guys, so it's been almost a week since I shot all that stuff. I've been playing around with uh, connections and settings and all that stuff, all the things that I, I dread and the reason why I didn't really want to do this update, but you know, this update slash upgrade, I guess you could call it. But anyways, uh, I think I figured out mostly everything that is you know gonna get me to the point where I feel very confident about using the new computer, the new setup. I also have my old setup right over here because um, I, there's some things that wasn't working correctly and blah, 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 I had to go back and forth. So in the next video, I'm gonna try to show you guys how I set up my patch bay. And when I say try to, it's just because it's there's just a lot. There's actually gonna be four full patch bays now. Um, to be able to do everything with all the inputs and outputs and all the gear and blah, blah, blah. But I think I found a good way to show you guys that. And then there's going to be another video where I get to show you guys all the mic preamps and what I've done in the, the drum room to show you guys how all the mic pre's are then routed to its own separate patch bay, how I'm able to, to, to essentially have 24 mic pre's, but it's only send 12 channels out to here. And anyways, <laughs> just there's a lot of stuff to go through. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to find True Sound Studios on Instagram. I essentially post there every single day. It's a, it's a great way to see everything that goes on in between all of these YouTube videos. Also, still an amazing place to reach out if you guys have questions or you want to share some sort of idea or whatever. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.